Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Sulfuric Acid. Before going into the details of today's lecture, what we will do? We will have a kind of recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous couple of lectures. In the previous couple of lectures, we started with discussion on a comparison between inorganic chemical industry and organic chemical industry. Then we started our discussions on sulfur with its uh, properties, consumption pattern, raw materials followed by processes for production of elemental sulphur where we have seen three different types of processes are available for production of elemental sulphur. The first one is elemental sulphur mining from salt domes, the second one is H2S or hydrogen sulphide conversion from natural gas and industrial gas or oxidation and reduction of hydrogen sulphide and then iron pyrites. So, all these three processes we have discussed with the possible raw materials, chemical reactions if any and then uh, basis, quantitative requirements etc. with a proper flow chart, with a proper flow sheet and process description followed by major engineering problems if any, those things we have already seen. Then we started discussing about sulfuric acid, we started with its properties and grades, then we started discussing types of methods of production how many types of uh, methods available for the production of sulfuric acid. We have seen conventional older chamber process and then modern contact process. These two types of processes are available. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss production of sulfuric acid using contact processes. Right? So, uh, methods of sulfuric acid production, chamber process and contact process are uh, two very famous processes. Contact process is based on sulfur dioxide. It yields acid of uh, concentration more than 98 percent if required which can be diluted. Whereas the chamber process is also based on sulfur dioxide, but it yields acid of concentration less than 80 percent H2SO4. Okay? So, now we see details of contact sulfuric acid process. Chemical reactions, elemental sulfur whatever is there that will be oxidized to give sulfur dioxide. This sulfur dioxide will be further oxidized to give sulfur trioxide. This sulfur trioxide would be dissolved in water to get the sulfuric acid. This reaction we can see is a reversible reaction. So, wherever there are reversible reactions then uh, kinetics and thermodynamic parameters uh, play vital role as engineering problems, engineering issues. So, one should be careful about uh, such processes. Then raw materials, raw materials natural sulfur, uh, elemental sulfur whatever if it is available that can be used. So, sulfur combustion yields usually very pure sulfur dioxide which requires only filtration and drying. However, uh, not many countries are having uh, uh, sulfur resources or uh, you know elemental sulfur they can be mined, such kind of resources are not there in many countries including in India. So, what we do? We depend on sulfur by other different types of processes, available processes. Like in the previous lecture what we have seen, we have seen uh, pyrites of iron ore or iron pyrites. Here uh, in this process what we have seen when thermal dissociation of uh, uh, iron pyrites takes place, then uh, pyrotoid or iron sulfide forms in a molten liquid form and then that can be granulated and then this if you do the roasting in uh, fluidized bed reactors then you can get uh, sulfur dioxide and then this sulfur dioxide you can purify to get H2SO4 after oxidizing followed by you know absorption in water. Okay? So, this, this, uh, this is a source like that uh, there are uh, uh, smelting process of non-ferrous metals also like zinc, lead, etc. In such kind of processes also sulfur, uh, sulfur uh, sources may be there and sulfur sources will be there and then because of those sulfur sources in ores then sulfur dioxide would form there also. So, then that can be uh, uh, that can also be utilized similar like you know you know uh, roasting of uh, iron pyrites, pyrotite similar like you know roasting of iron pyrotite processes. Okay? Now, but uh, whatever sulfur dioxide you get from these uh, sources they will be having impurities, uh, usually 40 to 45 percent sulfur only would be there and then that must be roasted and then purified. So, so that to remove dust 
and then followed by cooling, scrubbing, filtering, drying by concentrated acid to remove uh, dust, moisture and catalyst poisons etc. All these processes has to be done before taking this sulphur dioxide to contact process as a feed to produce the sulphur uh, trioxide followed by sulfuric acid, right. So, uh, since we are getting from ores the sulphur source for uh, the sulphur is some kind of ores here now iron pyrites. So, then in ores so many uh, minerals and then inorganic uh, impurities may be there. So, like silica, arsenic, chlorides, etc. may be there. So, if arsenic or chlorides, etc. are there in sulphur sources, then they will be deactivating the catalyst as we have seen in the previous lecture as well. So, all those things should be removed either from the sulphur or from the sulphur dioxide gases, okay. So, pyrates would also be a kind of source for the sulphur dioxide which can be further oxidized and then produced sulphuric acid. Likewise, smelter sources SO2 obtained by roasting non-ferrous sulphide ores also uh, such as zinc, lead and copper and then here also whatever the sulphur dioxide you get that will not be pure enough. So, then uh, proper purification is, uh, should be done as has been done in the case of uh, iron pyrates, okay. Waste sulfuric acid sources, actually sulfuric acid is also used as a catalyst for many reactions. So, when it is used as a catalyst, um, only a fraction of it would be used and then major and then it uh, it would be diluted, slightly diluted or sl slightly contaminated and then would be treated as a waste sulfuric acid. But uh, such even if it is slightly diluted, the concentration would be above the 70 percent in general for majority of the waste sulfuric acid. So, such concentrated sulfuric acid you cannot throw because of the pollution concerns as well. And then rather uh, discarding it you know or even let us say if you wanted to do the neutralization before discarding or different applications that would be very expensive. So, then better what you do you can do the purification of such waste acids and then uh, reuse, uh, reuse for the applications wherever uh, this sulfuric acid is required. Because people have found uh, purification of such waste sulfuric acid is going to be much cheaper than uh, producing the uh, virgin sulfuric acid from the pure sulfur sources. Some of the uh, waste H2SO4 sources are listed below like uh, iron sulphate from iron and steel pickle liquors and then H2SO4 from petroleum refinery operations are usually roasted to recover SO2 and then from SO2 you get SO3 and then sulfuric acid. Then H2S sources also as we have already seen you know uh, in production of fuel gases as well as in many refinery gases this H2S is uh, present as an impurity and then it has to be removed for the proper applications of uh, you know those gases mixtures as fuel gases or refinery gases whatever may be the application. So, how do you remove? We have seen like ethanol amine kind of solutions may be used to absorb this H2S and then that dilute solution will, uh, would be uh, heated or uh, hot stripping would be done to liberate pure, pure H2S. And then this pure H2S can be taken and then oxidized and followed by reduction to get uh, sulfur, elemental sulfur or sulfur dioxide and then that can be again used as a kind of source for the production of sulfuric acid. For example, H2S yes, oxidation if you do you get sulfur dioxide along with the water, okay. So, there is a source of sulfur here as well. So, like that even though if you do not have elemental sulfur uh, uh, resources from the mining, uh, you have either sulfur sources or sulfur dioxide sources from different possible ways like you know pyrate ores, smelting process, waste H2SO4, H2S sources etc. Catalyst, previously platinum and an iron uh, kind of catalyst were used but they were having different problems like poisoning or uh, a rapid deactivation because of the heat such kind of problems were there. Then people found uh, V2O5 vanadium pentoxide as a very best catalyst for the production of sulfuric acid. This catalyst is actually used for the conversion of SO2 to SO3, okay. So, V2O5 dispersed on a porous carrier in pellet form is mostly used as catalyst for this purpose. Older chamber process etc. used to have platinum and iron oxide catalyst as well, but they uh, suffer from different problems like poisoning 
fragility, rapid heat deactivation and then high initial investment because platinum etc. these kind of metals are expensive. Okay. Quantitative requirements if you see, if you wanted to produce 1 ton of 100 percent sulfuric acid then you need 0 0.67 tons of sulphur dioxide and air 1450 to 2200 normal cubic meters of air is required. Plant capacities vary between 50 to 1000 tons per day of 100 percent pure H2SO4 sulfuric acid. So, now we see a uh, contact process by a flow chart. So, whatever the gases actually for the contact process SO2 and then oxygen are the primary raw materials. Okay. These are actually fed to a uh, catalytic converter. Right? These gases have to be dry enough, if they are not dried enough so then what can be done? These gases can be dried and mixed and then sent to catalytic converter. Okay. So, the percentage of uh, mixture of whatever the mixture of gas that you are going to feed to the reactor they sh that should have 7 to 10 percent of SO2 and then 11 to 14 percent of O2. These are based on the uh, many, uh, uh, many uh, reasons are there, V2O5 actually it is a uh, slow catalyst, it, it, it is does not catalyze react, uh, reactions very rapidly. So, that is the reason you cannot have high concentrations of uh, sulphur dioxide in the mixture. The conversion of SO2 to SO3 should be as much high as possible, but however uh, and in this process in the single contact process what happened the conversion is not much, it is only 80 percent. Right. Also what happens these gases when they come out of the reactor lot of heat is liberating actually during the absorption as well as the before the absorption also that heat has to be recovered. So, like that uh, several reasons are there why should we go for uh, you know uh, only this much percentage of SO2 and an O2 we are going to see those details in the uh, section of major engineering problems anyway. So, whatever the dried gases of uh, SO2 and an O2 are there they will be sent to a two stage catalytic converter, right? two stages are there. So, one stage is the high temperature stage, okay? so which is packed with a catalyst whatever the catalyst we have taken usually 30 percent load is, the, is taken here. Okay? So, then when these gases comes here by the time the uh, catalytic bed is maintained at 50 to 600 degree centigrade, so then uh, up to 80 percent of uh, SO2 is being converted to SO3, yield of uh, SO2 is uh, only 80 percent, SO2 to SO3 conversion takes place partially, no, does not take completely. So, then what, what we do in order to increase the conversion of SO2 to SO3, these hot gases because the reaction is occurring approximately at between 500 to 600 degree centigrade, the gases coming out from here would be at high temperature up to 600 degree centigrade. These gases would be cooled to 300 degree centigrade and then sent to a low temperature catalytic converter stage here, which is also having the same V2O5 catalyst, but having higher load, higher load of catalyst would be there. Okay? So, but, but the reaction temperature is low temperature around 400, 400 to 450 degree centigrade. Low high is with reference to each other. Right. So, the range of temperature is uh, in the uh, topper section is higher compared to the lower section that is the reason it is called high temperature. Though the 400 degree centigrade reaction temperature it is called as low temperature stage because the temperature is lower compared to the uh, previous uh, you know uh, top section. Right. So, here the conversion of uh, SO2 to SO3 is more than 97 percent or up 97 to 98 percent by the completion of the second stage reaction. Okay. So, these gases would be again at high temperature, they will be cooled by water and air coolers to approximately 150 degree centigrade. Then these gases would be sent to a oleum absorption tower where oleum droplets are sprayed from the top uh, in order to absorb these SO3 gases because these gases are having primarily now SO3 unreacted SO2 if any uh, and then unreacted oxygen anything those things only will be there. Here in oleum absorption tower 
uh, SO3 will be absorbed because from the top uh, volume droplets are sprayed from here from the top. And then this uh, rate of absorption is maintained such a way that acid concentration should not raise more than 1 percent of the acid concentration. Let us say if you wanted to uh, produce 30, 30 percent oleum only, right? So then you have to make the flow rates and then uh, absorption conditions such a way that the output oleum whatever you are getting that should not be having more than 31 uh, percent concentration, okay? So like that you have to operate the conditions, right? In this process, if at all any uh, uh, SO3 that is not absorbed along with the other impurities like SO2, O2, they would be sent to another absorption tower which is uh, sulfuric acid absorption tower to which 97% uh, H2SO4 is sprayed from the top and then as these gases are coming from the bottom. So here uh, remaining whatever the SO3 that is not being absorbed in the oleum absorption tower that would be absorbed here and then acid concentration increases to 98 percent like this. Whereas the spent gases SO2, O2 and etc. would be taken out, okay? So now here uh, in this process you can get up to uh, 40 percent oleum, right? You can even get up to 60-65 percent oleum also but that is not uh, economically feasible. If you wanted to have higher, uh, if you wanted to have, uh, if you wanted to have a higher concentration of uh, oleum or greater than 60 percent or something like that, it is better to take 20 percent oleum and do the distillation to increase its concentration. That is it. Uh, that is a more economically feasible process compared to the preparing the oleum, higher concentrated oleum by this process, okay? So this process whatever we have discussed the same thing is provided uh, as a text here. Sulphur dioxide and air containing 7 to 10 percent SO2 and 11 to 14 percent O2 is preheated by converter gas if necessary. If necessary in the sense if the gases are not dry enough then this process is required. Then this gas mixture is sent to first stage that is high temperature catalytic reactor stage. Uh, the reactor is made up of steel and reacted at the conditions as below 500 to 600 degree centigrade, 30 percent catalyst load, conversion of SO2 takes place up to 80 percent. Then product of converter is then cooled by heat exchange to 300 degree centigrade. Thus cooled product is further fed to second stage which is low temperature uh, stage where total yield of SO2 is increased to 97 percent. This stage operates approximately at 400 to 450 degree centigrade for favorable equilibrium. High yield product gases whatever are there after second stage or cold stage, they are cooled to 150 degree centigrade by water and air heat exchanges, then absorbed in oleum that is fed at a rate to allow not more than a 1 percent raise in acid strength. Finally, the scrubbing is done with a lower strength 97 percent sulfuric acid. Based on the requirement of consumers, oleum concentrations up to 40 percent can be made by tower absorption. However, economically higher strength oleum up to 65 percent can be prepared by distilling 20 percent oleum, right? So in this process uh, absorption is taking place and these reactions are exothermic, lot of heat is being evolved. So when this heat exchange taking place, steam uh, is generated at high pressures usually. So this steam is sufficient enough to generate uh, power or electricity. So that means uh, in this uh, process also uh, electricity or power is a co-product. You know, uh, elemental sulphur production from iron uh, pirates whatever we have seen, there also a lot of steam is generated. So electricity could, uh, elex electricity is produced there. Here also a lot of uh, steam is generated. So that steam can be utilized for the internal heating requirement within the plant. After that also sufficiently large amount of steam is remaining. So that can be utilized for production of electricity. Major engineering problems. First problem is the design of uh, multi-stage uh, converters. Here we have seen only two-stage converters, high, uh, high temperature and low temperature converters only. But in general, 
Some plants where the capacity is very large up to 1000 tons per day, in such cases uh, it, the plant may be having 3-4 stages as well. So, designing uh, such multi catalytic or uh, such multi stage catalytic converter is very uh, difficult challenging task especially when the reactions are highly exothermic. Okay? So, some designs contain even 3 or 4 stages rather than the conventional 2 stage operations for large capacity plants. Then space velocity optimization in catalyst chamber also. Space velocity is nothing but uh, rate of gas in to converter or catalytic converter divided by the weight of catalyst. This is actually space velocity, right? It is having the time inverse units, right? This is a very important uh, uh, parameter in uh, majority of the gas solid reactions, okay? Or reactions taking place on solid surface, something like that, as in packed beds or fluid as beds, etc. So, then under such conditions, space velocity has to be optimized. So, if you have the higher space velocity, sometimes uh, uh, good, if you have lower sp space velocity, sometimes it is good, depends on the operation, but it also you know adds cost, right. So, if you go for the higher space velocity, then pumping cost, etc., may be increasing. So, there should be a uh, trade off between pumping cost and fixed charges of the reactor also. Okay? Based on that one, this optimization has been uh, based on uh, those uh, criteria, uh, optimization of the space velocity has to be done. Then problems associated with corrosion. Actually, in uh, so many studies indicated that the yield of uh, uh, SO3 increases by uh, square root of pressure for a fixed temperature. Let us say if you are doing reaction at a fixed temperature of 500 degrees centigrade, if you increase the pressure, the yield increases. But however, when you increase the pressure, what happens? The not only compression cost increases, uh, you know, or the units required for the such high pressure compression, in, they incur additional cost plus in addition to that one, corrosion is also an issue. Okay? So, because of these two problems, not only um, because of these two problems, though higher pressure is good for the higher yield, uh, usually it, they are not preferred. Okay? Then making the process suitable to use of various types of gas feeds. Now gas feeds in this process what we have seen uh, uh, 7 to 10 percent of SO2 and then 11 to 14 percent of O2 only, why not other percentages? right? So, such kind of issues uh, should be properly ad addressed. Obviously, this again depends on the uh, catalyst and then size of the reactor and then what uh, flow rate or, uh, you, are you allowing these gases to the reactor and then what is the rate of heat transfer when you cool the gases coming out from the first stage of the converter, then what is the rate of heat transfer when they are entering to the second stage or cold stage, then what is the rate of heat transfer. Uh, when the gases are being cooled when after coming out from the second stage, all these parameters should be taken into the considerations. Okay? So, let us say if you address both the problems of uh, uh, multi-stage reactors, catalytic reactors that is step A and then uh, space velocity optimization is the point B. When you have these things, what happens? You supposed to go uh, and then you will be having low space velocity. When the space velocity is low and then multi stages are there, especially when multi stages are then are there, then what happened? The uh, catalytic bed whatever is there that will become very thin. When the catalytic bed becomes thin and then space velocity is very low, then what happened? A kind of back mixing takes place and then because of that back mixing, you know, yield may be dropping substantially. Okay? So, again you cannot completely focus on points A and B. If you completely focus on point A and B, then the, such kind of problems, a reduction of problem may be there. So, uh, all these problems you have to take and address such a way that yield is not affected. Then removal of heat of absorption of SO3 in acid. When the absorption of uh, SO3 is taking place not only in the uh, acid tower, sulfuric acid tower, but also in oleum 
a tower, lot of heat is being liberated, lot of heat is being liberated that you do the absorption then what you do you get lot of steam, you get lot of uh, steam and then that steam can be utilized for the electricity production. So, you have to have proper uh, mechanism to recover it. So, then what has been done usually pipe coolers with water dripping over external surface have been replaced by cast iron pipe with internal fins to promote better heat transfer. And then pressure drop must be low so that 8 centimeter stake packing is often used. So, that is about the contact process for the production of sulfuric acid. But in this process what we have seen up to 97 or 98 percent of uh, uh, SO2 conversion is only taking place. Right. So, then uh, what happens because of uh, you know environmental concerns, you cannot leave such large amount of SO2 in the environment. So, from the stake gases what you have to do? You have to, to absorb this SO2 in some solutions, right? uh, alkalis are usually used. So, then that adds some cost, addition of the cost. Right? So, since it is increasing the cost, you cannot leave uh, SO2 or exit, to, uh, or you cannot release this SO2 because it is having high percent of SO2, 3 percent is high percent actually unreacted SO2. It is a high percent because we are, the plants are producing you know so many tons. Per 1 ton of uh, sulfuric acid, you need 0 0.67 tons of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, SO2. Now, you take uh, 3 percent of uh, 0.67 tons of uh, SO2, that much is remaining, right? that much is unreacted and this is we are taking 1 ton. Let us say if you have 100 tons, so then multiplied by 3, multi multiplied by 100. So, uh, you, can, you can calculate how much SO2 is there, that much SO2 you cannot release, uh, you cannot uh, release into the atmosphere because of the pollution concern. So, you must absorb it or otherwise you have to go for the other alternative options. So, in order to reduce the absorption cost because large uh, this amount is very large though it looks like 3 percent or 2 percent or something like that, but when you take in terms of tons it is large quantity. So, such large quantity of SO2 for if you wanted to do absorption, so then absorption cost increases drastically. So, for that reason people what have done? They try to look out uh, for different options and then people come out with the double contact process where whatever the unreacted SO3 is there, SO3 from the uh, stake gases or the last, last section of uh, sulfuric acid uh, absorption tower, they will be taken to uh, you know uh, first converter again after uh, you know uh, passing through a, a, a heating section like that. Right? So, since SO3 most of it is most of the SO3 is absorbed, so then SO3 contents would be less. So, SO2 plus O2 giving rise to uh, SO3, if this content is gradually decreasing, so then uh, its concentration is less whereas the reactants SO2 and O2 concentrations are more. So, then positive or you know uh, right hand side reactions will progress faster and then equilibrium conversion gradually increases because of this process. Thus, uh, double absorption process or double contact double absorption process has been developed. That is what we are going to see now. Conversion using single absorption contact process were typically 97 to 98 percent. The single contact processes use alkali scrubbers on tail gases to stay within the permissible limits of SO2 emissions as per the pollution concerns. So, subsequently double contact process is developed to maintain allowable emissions of SO2 into the atmosphere without need of additional scrubbers. In this process gases leaving the first absorption tower are reheated by heat exchange with bottom converter gases and re-enter the final stage converter. Okay? After the first tower of uh, absorption you know what happens? Lot of uh, SO3, SO2 and O2 are not being uh, absorbed. So, then uh, they will be reheated by heat exchange with bottom converter gases and then re-enter the final stage of converter. Right? It increases SO2 conversion to SO3 up to 99.7 percent almost complete conversion. 
thus reduces stake emission of unconverted SO2 into the atmosphere. This increase is due to passing the gas through converter a second time after majority of SO3 had been scrubbed out of the gas, thus equilibrium is disturbed. It is not because of the increased catalytic activity, because of resending the gases for the second time to the converter. It is also known as the double catalyst process or double contact double absorption process. So, lower content of SO3 enables this reaction uh, to move in a uh, positive right hand side direction to uh, produce more SO3 and then better recovery or better conversion of SO2 can be achieved or co almost complete conversion of SO2 can be achieved. Gases leaving the final stage are cooled and SO3 is absorbed in a final absorber tower. Further, sulfur combustion heat whatever is there, it is utilized in waste heat boilers to generate steam for melting the sulfur and for power generation purposes around the plant. Okay? So, waste heat raw, when you uh, do this waste heat boilers to generate heat, lot of steam is being uh, generated. Okay? So, steam is co-product of the plant. Modern plants generate up to 6 mega pascals of steam which can be compared with 2 mega pascals of steam. Right? Steam generated in large sulphur burning plants normally exceeds 1.3 ton per metric ton of acid production which is quite high quantity. In terms of numbers if you see for example, in Sweden 2200 tons per day plant delivers 52 megawatts of heat to a district heating system which is equivalent to saving of 35700 tons of fuel oil per day. Per day, per day this much fuel oil uh, you are consuming to get whatever the heating requirement, those heating requirement could be ful fulfilled with this 52 megawatts of heat that is being uh, you know because of the steam that is being generated in a plant in Sweden. Okay? Such is the importance of the steam that is produced in the uh, sulfuric acid uh, production process as a co-product. Now we see characteristics of catalyst for sulfuric acid production. Porous carrier, it should have a carrier which is sufficiently uh, porous in nature, for example, alumina, silica, gel, geolite, etc. And then large surface area should be there. And then controlled pore size should be there. In geolites, usually pore size is very much controlled. Further, resistance to process gases. Process gases are up to 700, 600 degrees centigrade and as we have seen in the uh, flow chart. At high temperature, if we use, if these uh, carriers are used, you know, they should be thermally resistant enough. So, that is resistant to process gases at high temperature if used in the pellet forms for packed beds or in powder form for fluidized beds. Active catalytic agent, in this case uh, vanadium pentoxide is active agent. Preparation methods are confidential because of the competitive market. However, uh, generally in general uh, the V2O5 preparation methods include adding water soluble compounds to gels or porous substrates and firing at high temperatures however below the sintering point. Okay? Promoters are also in general uh, added, commonly alkali or metallic compounds added in trace amounts to enhance the activity of uh, catalytic agents. Advantages of V2O5 catalyst if you take, it is relatively immune to poisoning compared to other catalysts. It is one of the major important thing because if it is poisoning, either you have to go for the reactivation uh, or you know you have to replace with the fresh catalyst. So, and then uh, this not only hampers the continuous uh, production process but also adds up the cost. So, if you have a catalyst which gets less poisoned in general, so then it is obviously better compared to the uh, catalyst which can get easily poisoned. Okay? It is having substantially low initial investment compared to the platinum obviously it is uh, much cheaper and then 
only 5% replacement per year is required. You can see how much it is uh, having, you know, immunity towards the poisoning, okay? Only 5% replacement uh, per year is required. It requires only 10 kg of catalyst mass containing 7 to 8% V2O5 per daily ton of 100% acid production. If you have a plant where you are producing 1 ton of acid, then you need only 10 kg of catalyst. This catalyst is including the uh, precursors and then uh, if, if, any, if any promoters including the active agents, so all these three weights together 10 kg, out of which only 7 to 8 percent of uh, V2O5 is there. Such low quantity of V2O5 is required per daily ton of uh, 100 percent acid production, okay? However, it has some disadvantages. What are the disadvantages? It is less active actually. However, actually some, such kind of reactions were uh, highly exothermic, it is better to have a catalyst which is, which is less active, okay? And thus, but uh, what is the disadvantage of uh, having the less active uh, catalyst in this process? Then you have to use high O2 to SO2 gas mixture to give economic conversion. Then constraint of using dilute SO2 input only, you cannot use highly concentrated SO2. You can use only up to 7 to 10 percent of SO2 in the uh, uh, reactor, okay? Whatever the gases mixture you are taking, you, in that mixture you can have only 7 to 10 percent of SO2. Larger converters required because of such uh, reasons and thus higher initial investment for converters are required, okay? So though it is uh, uh, cheaper catalyst bec because of its less activeness and then because of its constraint that it cannot take higher concentrations of SO2 input, uh, higher size of uh, reactors uh, or larger size of the converters are required which adds to the initial cost, initial investment. Some more characteristics of this uh, V2O5 uh, with respect to the sulfuric acid production if you see. Uh, commercial catalyst may also contain appreciable amounts of potassium sulphide, potassium salts in addition to V2O5. At operating temperatures, active ingredients are in general in a molten salt form held in porous silica pellets if you are using silica as base or as uh, carrier or the supporter. Sometimes too great charged, a less active but harder type catalyst being used in the first pass of converter and a more active but softer type of uh, catalyst in subsequent passes after the first pass. These are based on the economic conversion and then balance, economic uh, uh, balance for uh, agonistic heat transfer and other uh, parameters of the processes. These catalysts are long lived up to 20 years, so such, such good, such high is their uh, life period. Up to 20 years you can use them because it is less poisoning and you need only small amount of V2O5 in general and are not subject to poisoning except for fluorine which damages the siliceous carrier. Arsenic components if at all they are present, they will also substantially deactivate the catalyst. Similarly, if halogens are there, so then uh, vanadium may be uh, uh, removed as uh, volatile oxychlorides, right? So that is the reason if you have large amount of uh, halogens or halides like you know chlorides, etc., if you have large amount of chlorides then they should also be removed. So any arsenics and chlorides are there, they should be removed either from the elemental sulphur or from the SO2 gases wherever it is possible before feeding to the catalytic converter they should be removed. Otherwise they will be greatly deactivating the catalyst. Plugging with dust and acid mist can also be a problem in general. Dust can be removed from the first pass catalyst by removal and screening. Now we see uh, what are the options of contact process equipment. Actually this process has been developed so much that so much research has been done on almost each and every aspect, each and every component of the process, right? So some of the options we list them here. Recent plants have outdoor type of construction 
which reduces initial uh, capital investment. And then these plants are usually insulated wherever necessary to conserve the heat but are otherwise completely exposed to the atmosphere. Mostly uh, the modern plants they are having only control room enclosed, rest all the plant is you know open to the atmosphere. Many variations in the equipment employed and then material of construction are existing across the plants, different plants are having different commercial plants are having but the process is same. So, they have different types of uh, equipments used actually. Let us say burners along with the treatment of burner gas, what types of burners you wanted to use? Let us say burner gases are there, how many ways that are there to treat these burner gases? Heat exchangers obviously we have seen, what type of heat, heat exchangers you wanted to do? you wanted to use similarly coolers. So, there are several options, right? So, people have used different heat, heat exchangers, different coolers from one plant to the another, another plant like that. Like that converters also, single uh, you know single contact process or double contact process like you know how many stages you wanted to have all those things you know several options are there. Also some people use packed bed, some people use fluidized bed reactors. So, different options are there. Then SO3 absorbers along with the required blowers, what types of absorbers you wanted to use, what is the MOC and then uh, blowers are there, acid pumps are there, sulphur pumps are there. So, all these are having different options. One has to do the proper economic calculation uh, without overlooking the safety, uh, safety aspects and then uh, select accordingly these equipments acid coolers, gas purifications, etc. So, many options are there. Now, recovery of used sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid actually uh, for example, it is also used for uh, catalyst purpose. We have seen in the previous lecture it is a good oxidizing agent, it is also good dehydrating agent, uh, agent etc. But it is also used as a catalyst for several organic reactions also, uh, something like alkylation etc. Whatever the sulfuric acid that you have taken for the reaction um, to catalyze the reaction, after the reaction if you take the cat if you take the sulfuric acid you can see that acid is only uh, uh, marginally diluted. Maybe you take 98 percent H2SO4 and then after the reaction uh, when you use this uh, H2SO4 as catalyst, after the reaction uh, you take the H2SO4 and check its acid strength, you may be having more than 90 percent, 90-92 percent H2SO4. So, it is only marginally diluted. So, when have such kind of acid sources rather uh, producing acid from the virgin sources of sulphur or sulphur dioxide, it is better to uh, recover or reconcentrate it to the higher concentration and reuse it, such kind of things are there. Okay, that is one use. Another use is that you know sulfuric acid is a very strong acid as we have discussed yesterday. So, such strong acid if you want to neutralize you need lot of uh, uh, basic solutions etc. Base, you need lot of base solutions and then process may be expensive, right? If you do not do the neutralization you cannot discard into the atmosphere as it is. So, those are the other problems even if the acid is uh, highly diluted after the process. So, then it is better to find out a way how you can utilize or uh, recover the sulfuric acid and then use it. So, first what we do? We see uh, or uh, we enlist a few uh, points where uh, recovery of sulfuric acid is required and then how it is being recovered, those things we are going to see now. Much used sulfuric acid is recovered and recycled in general. This used acid is often referred to as waste acid, a misnomer. Many users do not consume the acid but dilute and contaminate it. Some of it can be recovered and reused at a cheaper cost than the virgin acid. Let us say uh, alkylation reaction, if you take 98 percent H2SO4 as the catalyst, after the reaction you are getting 92 percent of H2SO4. So, rather uh, discarding it and then buying or producing the new one, the same one you can uh, concentrate it and reuse it. It will be much cheaper compared to the virgin acid. Some of it must be recovered in order to meet environmental restrictions or to avoid the uh, cost of neutralization. Okay? About 2 multiplied by 10 power 6 tons of uh, spent acid is reused each year. 
Spent alkylation acid catalyst is black but still relatively strong and not too heavily contaminated. See after the reaction actually some kind of alkylation reactions are taking place in the presence of sulfuric acid. So, after the reaction whatever the sulfuric acid is there that is called as spent alkylation acid catalyst. This is spent, diluted, but still it is uh, strong enough. Why? Because you can see 90 percent H2SO4 is there in spent uh, alkylation acid catalyst. Only 5 percent water and 5 percent other hydrocarbons of the reactions. So, rather going for a new acid or rather going for a uh, fresh acid for the subsequent batches or sequences of the reactions, you can concentrate this acid and then reuse it. That would be more economically better. Nitration spent acid is diluted and only slightly contaminated up to 73-75 percent H2SO4 would be there in the nitration spent acid catalyst. It is also nitration spent acid cat catalyst in the sense you have a nitration reaction in the presence of uh, sulfuric acid only it is taking place. After the reaction whatever the sulfuric acid is there that spent sulfuric acid is known as the nitration spent acid okay? which, is, uh, which is usually diluted but still uh, you know strong enough if it is not very strong. Spent sludge acids from petroleum refining uh, are dirty usually, low in acidity and heavily contaminated. See, you are calling 75 percent H2SO4 is there in the sludge, but still you are calling it say, uh, heavily contaminated. Because usually acid of 90 percent or higher is usually used for majority of the process. Okay? So, now uh, though it is heavily diluted or contaminated, you can uh, use it or you can uh, recycle rec uh, and then uh, recover and then reuse again. Okay? Remaining in this process in this sludge, petroleum sludge usually remaining is 20 percent or more hydrocarbons and then about uh, you know uh, 5 percent or 10 percent remaining is the water. These spent sludge acids can be added to spent alkylation acid in small percentages or reduced to sulphur dioxide. These acids whatever are there if you are not able to concentrate to 98 percent H2SO4, you can what you can do? You can uh, heat it or reduce it to the sulphur dioxide by heating. Right? This sulphur dioxide you can use as a byproduct. Okay? But however, this process is slightly expensive. Other spent acids have been used for their ability to absorb water depending on the percentage of uh, acid strength whether it is 70 percent, 80 percent or 90 percent they can also be used for absorbing water. Let us say you have some kind of nitration reactions uh, and then alcohol production etc. In, the, in those processes what happens? You know uh, some moisture would be there if you wanted to absorb that moisture this, this spent acid catalyst can be used. Okay? Sometimes can be recovered by simple concentration. Concentrating sulfuric acid or weak uh, concentrating weak sulfuric acid is also a separate process. We are not discussing. Anyway, if somebody interested, they can uh, go to the uh, reference book by Shrewish Chemical Engineering, that uh, one of the reference that we are following, and then understand the process. Some sulfuric acid is also being used in steel industry for pickling, that is known as the preparation of plate for tining or galvanizing. So, here also you get the uh, you know spent liquors uh, which is you know having a lot of uh, sulfuric acid. Because of need to eliminate discharge of spent liquors into streams and of difficulty treating such liquors, uh, such liquors for recovery of acid values, H2SO4 is being replaced by HCl. Earlier people were using H2SO4 for such kind of process, but you know recovery and then uh, subsequent treating of uh, spent acid, uh, spent sulfuric acid is much difficult compared to that of hydrochloric acid. Because of that people are uh, moving towards hydrochloric acid because uh, spent hydrochloric acid liquor can be treated to recover acid values and to avoid stream pollution much easily compared to the case of spent sulfuric acid. A residual liquor similar to steel mill pickle liquor is obtained from titanium pigment plants 
which uses sulfuric acid to produce titanium dioxide from ilmenite, right? So, most uh, titanium dioxide pigment is made by chloride root to avoid the dispersal problem associated with the use of sulfuric acid, same as in the previous case here. Further nitration spent acid is usually recovered by the concentration process. Spent alkylation acid is being recovered by atomizing it, burning it in a furnace and cooling and purifying the gases in a manner similar to that used for smelting purposes or smelters or smelter gases. SO2 gas resulting from combustion is then converted into a new virgin pure acid in a contact process. From here whatever SO2 you get this process that can be you know uh, converted to the SO3 and then from here you can get H2SO4 as in the contact process as we have discussed. Once you have SO2 then purify it and then follow the contact process. Only thing that you have to check uh, whether is it economically feasible or economically uh, you know profitable or not. Petroleum sludge acids may be blended with spent uh, alkylation acid which can supply any fuel deficiency that is required for the alkylation acids. Prior to processes were available for recovering alkylation spent, gas, spent acid and before it was produced in large quantity that is you know in, uh, in previous days in, law, in uh, decades before people used to take the petroleum sludge uh, and then diluting it or hydrolyzing it with water and increasing the temperature either at ambient or super atmospheric pressure. So, that the upper layer which is hydrocarbon layer would be decanted and the lower layer which would be having the uh, mostly acid. So, that can be concentrated for the acid recovery. So, that is, this is what people were uh, following previously as well. So, this is all about uh, sulfuric acid production, consumption pattern and then engineering uh, problems and then uh, uh, requirement catalyst characteristics etcetera and then uh, recycling or reuse of uh, or recovery of spent gas acid etcetera those things. The references for this lecture are provided here. However, most of the contents may be found from these two books. Thank you.